John, you just asked you, is there any update on the Cam Sutton stuff? I have something from Dave Burkett. It's it's not a major update, but he says as of 920 this morning, Cam Sutton still hasn't turned himself in on that warrant for domestic battery by strangulation. That's per the sheriff's office down there in Florida. Burkett, in a comment, clarified something else. He said um, it's been reported yesterday his license plate had shown up on a license plate reader in Florida I asked today if he's considered a missing person, and they said no, just at large. So what's the that, what's the designation there? That they don't think he, like, there's no... Well, so they, at least they know his car was there. It, I don't know if they have video surveillance of showing who the driver is. Right, or if it, yeah. Um, but they got to believe that he was the driver of his vehicle. Um, they do believe, and it states in the article, that he is in Florida, not Michigan, per the, the license plate reader. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, at this point, at large just means they don't believe anything, anything foul has happened to him. Nothing nefarious. Because there yeah. was a, a concern. If they've been looking for him for two weeks, now they've put this social media post out. They've, they've basically gone nationwide searching for him. In this day and age, if you haven't been able to, to, to locate somebody for two weeks, there you know, you, you got to believe, well, where is he? Why can't you find somebody at in this day and age, and especially when the charges are this? It's not like it was an a, you know a fender bender and he just left the scene. Too many it's, speeding tickets and yeah. they can't find him. It, no, this is serious. Yeah, and you know I think with domestic disputes, there's always two sides to a story. But when you have visible injury, injury, and you flee, you look guilty as hell. And I know that's not enough to, you know, sentence him. I'm not a jury or a judge, but we're all taking this in in real time. This broke yesterday. He looks guilty as hell, and we can't find him. We being like, you know, the society can't find him. It's fair to question if he's ever going to play for the Lions again. Sure. And then we can bring it to the football space and, and ask, now what? Because, John, I, I think Brad Holmes, we gave him a lot of credit. He filled all the needs. Now we turn our attention to the draft, and you can take whoever you want. Is corner now back on the table as a need that he still needs to address before the draft? It's hard to answer I that know. question because you just you, you, there's so many unknowns. You don't know what's going on. But if if they're operating under the assumption, and I would imagine NFL is going to have investigators, the Lions are going to have investigators. They're going to make some calls. They're going to say, "Hey, you know, what are the facts of this case?" And I don't know what they'll be able to get from the police. If the police report is, you know, a, a public matter, they'll be able to see what everybody else can see, and then they'll have to make their determination. Oh, do we think he's going to be serving a suspension? Do we think he will be? unavailable to play anywhere in the NFL and in, in, in incarcerated or whatever it might or be. Or a lengthy suspension where he couldn't play even if you wanted him to. Right. Yeah. They're going to have to make those judgments. And if it is for any length of time that he's unavailable, then yeah, they still need to address the need of cover corner. One of the questions yesterday when this was all kind of filtering out was, well, this happened on March 7th. Mm -hmm. That's before free agency. Did the Lions add Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson two corners, knowing there was going to be a big need because of Sutton? But the Lions announced yesterday they claimed that they didn't know about it until yesterday. Mm -hmm. So they they brought those two guys in with the assumption that Cam Sutton was also going to be on the football field this season, which to me would say, well, if he was going to be their number two corner, and now we don't know where he is, let alone if he will be playing football. Yeah, it's still a need for this team. And if you're Brad Holmes, free agency's not over. There's names out there. There's dudes that can help this team. If you're anticipating that he's going to go on some exempt list or be cut or not be on the roster, yeah, add another depth corner. That way you can go into the draft and keep all your options on the table. Don't feel like you have to take a corner at 29. Right, and let's let's not go down the road of, well, the Jerry Sneed is still on the trading block because I mean, you could make that argument, but it's more likely – that they will go, like they did with the offensive line, a one-year deal for a proven veteran. Um, I think they, it's more likely that they explore the option of a Stephon Gilmore, who is available, and maybe he was a guy that you're looking, well, if we can get what we want in the draft, or if the draft falls the way we think it is, and we're taking the best available, if it's a Cooper DeGene, if it's a Kool-Aid McKinstry, or insert any corner that you believe is the best available at 29, 
then maybe you don't need to. But now, are you looking at it going, well, for a year, we, we've got to do this. The Rodgers um, with the Detroit News. Justin or, Rogers. Yeah, Justin Rogers. Yeah. Is this is this part of that rainy day fund? Yeah. Yes. That that they've been saving up for. And now all of a sudden, instead of waiting until August or September, they've got to tap into it now. Yeah, we had referenced it right before free agency. Justin Rogers, he'll he'll write and um and get to some of the stuff that's maybe under the radar and, and he touched on that the Lions' personal belief is they like to keep, I think he said fifteen to twenty million dollars in cap space. And in adding all of these players, they've been able to do that. Yeah, and they and and still have a little wiggle room. Because think about this. The way Brad Holmes has attacked free agency, he added Zeitler to an offensive line with Graham Glasgow, and I believe the two of them combined, their cap hit is less than oh, yeah. Jonah Jackson's. So he did a nice job. Even DJ Reader with shorter term deals and not fully guaranteed deals, spreading that cap space out so they can add Reader and Zeitler and two well, corners and still have a rainy day fund and still be able to add another body if stuff like this happens. Yeah, and they haven't manipulated the cap like an Eagles team, Philadelphia Eagles team has, but they have because Carlton Davis, while he came in here on the last year of his contract, they added a couple of voidable years and lessened his number. And it's the same thing with like a Marcus Davenport or uh, a, even DJ Reader. Even though he signed a two-year deal, there's a couple of voidables to spread that out and if they go at some point, which I think we all believe that they will redo Jared Goff's contract, that will add this year more cap space than it will take away. Let's get to the phones. You guys want to jump in 248-539-9797. What now for the Lions? Jeff in Roseville, you're on 97.1. Hey, hi, guys. I'm a first-time caller. I uh, love listening to your show. Appreciate it. Um, I w- yeah, I was, I was just thinking about this, uh, about when the Lions knew because uh, it would be interesting to, to know if they had knowledge when they when they made some of these moves. It, it doesn't it seem a little bit weird that if if the the police knew two weeks ago that he was on the run and that he was a player for the Detroit Lions, that they wouldn't have checked with the Lions much sooner than waiting until after their last resort of going on to social media. It would seem to me that the Lions may have actually known, but they're just not saying that. I. I it's just my my little theory. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, hey, if we can't find him, and especially since you know that he is employed in Michigan, maybe he's up there, and the, you know, you get a call from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, well, why are they calling about Cam Sutton? To, to find out where he is, they want to talk to him. It's, it's hard to imagine that the detectives in Hillsborough County wouldn't have made that call. Yeah, it's it's maybe a question of when they would have made that call because Carlton Davis, I believe, was traded to Detroit within the first seven days of Sutton being missing. I think they were adding Carlton Davis whether Cam Sutton was on this team either way. Yeah, But did they know? And I don't think it mattered for them adding Carlton Davis. Amik Robertson can play inside and outside. Was that them covering themselves I mean I, I don't I don't know I mean we just know what the statement said the statement said they found out yesterday yeah and we got no reason not to believe them we no. just uh, the, the question it just seems is odd there that, yeah. that nobody would have checked with the employer in the first two weeks a lot is odd about this story including the fact that he's he still has not been located yeah what did they say he's uh, he's at large he's not right. missing he's at large his vehicle with the license plate that they're looking for was spotted on camera yesterday. Um, which has been reported. They just haven't been able to find it and actually put officers with him. Texter says, fellas, what am I missing? I feel before the Sutton news, they still needed help in the secondary. Why does everybody think they're all set with the Davis signing? He's identical to Jerry Jacobs. How is that any better? They need two now instead of one. Other QBs are going to pick this secondary apart. Uh, he's much better than Jerry Jacobs. That's not even the same category. Come on. Yeah. That's apples and oranges. I'm with you. And... and you know, do they do they need to address it still? Is it still a need? And, and I think it, it it even becomes more of a need now. Yes, because I, again, we weren't present when this happened. Don't have the photos. Don't have any. I don't even have the police report. But if what has been reported by reputable sources that there were visible bruises, it seems like Cam Sutton. It's going to be a while before he plays football again. And who knows if that ever happens? Yeah. And again, the the, the reporting on this. ESPN had it in their story. The sheriff's office spokesperson told ESPN there was evidence of wounds on the woman's body. And then you disappear. It's one thing if you're there at four in the morning when this gets called in and you're calm and you state your case and you maintain, hey, I I didn't do what she says I did. We'll see it. You get your day in court. We solve it. Instead, evidence, 
again, the, the accusation is strangulation. So we're talking probably on the neck and the shoulders and the head. And then why disappear for two weeks? Because this, go, this is not going to go away. Yeah, you can't run from this problem. Like the lack of accountability. If you did something horrible, you will have to. Uh, you will, you have to address it. I mean, you have to. There will be consequences. 